As a kid, I was addicted to two things, Robot Wars and video games. So the Robot Wars PC games were an instant hit with me. This led to my interest in engineering and STEM in my teenage years, which coincided with the Robot Wars and BattleBots reboot shows. In 2021, I found a game called Robot Rumble 2. This free alpha video game had a bot builder unlike anything I'd ever seen before, and something I got the hang of with a couple days work. After making virtual robots off of what was already made by the community, I decided to make it was time to make a robot of my own. Four-wheel drive spinners were successful and popular at the time, so I wanted to create one with the most byte possible. Byte is a term to use to explain the feed rate of an opponent into your weapon. The less teeth you have on your weapon, the more byte you will have. Byte can also be balanced with moment of inertia and energy, whereas the more byte you have, the less MOI and energy you receive. This was the beginning of a robot called Midnight Sun. Over the years of the game version, uh, 32 different iterations of the robot were produced. However, in 2023, I wanted to try my hand at something new, but continue this lineage. In August 2022, I attended my first ever robotic combat event as a competitor, Adelaide's Robot Havoc 5, with an angled bar spinner. Not the smartest archetype for a beginner, but here we are. After four fights, getting my first ever win, and talking to some builders from my local area that I'd met there, plans were put forward to make an event in my local state. Thus, the beginning of Wollongong Robotic Combat. After the first event with the same angled bar spinner and a new flipper, proving to myself I can run multiple robots for an event, I, the planned build of Midnight Sun began. The original idea came as a 1.36 kilo beetle weight, but was downsized to a 150 gram Australian ant weight to get used to driving a vertical spinner, and how it compared to the video game. So the ant weight version of Midnight Sun was created. A longer chassis with a different shaped bar inspired by the Emperor, and co-designed and cut by James of Broken Link Robotics, were the biggest of the changes to the design. These changes were made because of, because of component differences and therefore needed a different layout. N30 gear motors were originally selected for the higher torque but were quickly changed out to 10 to 1 N20 gear, gear motors for weight, battery drain and drive speed. Originally a 1407 4100 kV motor was chosen for the weapon as it could reach the desired tip speed. This was later changed to a 1404 due to availability issues, and again changed to a 1507 for performance issues. The power was two 220 milliamp hour 1S batteries wired in series. This was later changed to a 190, 195 milliamp 2S battery for reliability and safety concerns, as the small 1S connectors were causing undesirable shorting due to the pins in the connectors melting together. This was packaged up with a 20 amp brushless ESC and a Malinky Nano for its light waist and ease of use. And remember, the bot has to be less than 150 grams. Chassis material is always key when creating robots of this size due to having to balance weight and strength. The original chassis was fully 3D printed from eSun EPACF and over time gradually incorporated more TPU before the latest updates of having a CNC milled HDPE chassis with carbon fiber upright and steel forks. These changes were made to create a more rigid and resistant to impact chassis while having a compliant flexible wedge surrounding the robot to mitigate drive damage due to driving errors. The weapon bar has had two iterations with roughly the same shape, the original and current 4mm thick hardox bar and a 3mm thick titanium bar when the robot was fitted to the 1404 motor. The change back to the hardox bar was also due to a failure in the epoxy with the 3mm bar attaching it to the motor. This caused it to twist and damage the can of the motor, making it almost impossible to remove. Pontoons were also added to the top plate to defend from horizontal spinners. 
On the 17th of June, WRC held its second tournament. At the same time, Midnight Sun was set for its debut. Each event is run a little differently from each other, so let's just go over how WRC events are run. Each robot is guaranteed four fights to qualify for the finals and decide seeding. In the finals, there are three rounds, including the final, meaning to win the competition, you must have seven fights, winning a minimum of three, depending on your number of entrants. Therefore, the more, you, the more qualifying fights you win, the higher seed you are, and the easier your run will be. For the qualifying fights, Midnight Sun drew BFD, a two-wheel drive drum robot, The Dark Knight, an offset horizontal spinner, Dark Blade, a two-wheel drive articulated chainsaw, and the reigning champion Parasite, a two-wheel drive vertical spinner driven by Glenn of BattleBots team Deathroll. Definitely not the easiest opponents. First up was BFD. I was pretty nervous for this as I'd not tested the robot with both the weapon and drive systems active. Because of this, I half expected the robots to explode. A quick warning for as the fight footage from WRC has a flashing light due to the arena lighting while recording. Unfortunately, this cannot be helped. <laughs> If I can. Okay, I'll go to Yeah. Happy enough. This fight was certainly over quickly, and strangely mirrored my first ever fight in robotic combat. As BFD fell back onto the weapon after being thrown into the air, the gearbox from the drive motor shattered and the top plate broke. This led to the LiPo battery falling out of, falling out of the robot. Due to WRC rules, this is an instant KO for safety. Midnight Sun goes 1-0. Next up was the Dark Knight. Before this fight happened, I realized the wedge around the chassis of the robot was actually too short to protect the weapon supports as their weapon bar sat higher than my entire chassis. The plan was to be in and out as quickly as possible. Once again, a short fight. However, this one showed the power of the vertical spinner, throwing Dark Knight almost into the, arena, the roof of the arena. During this hit, once again, their top plate was dislodged, exposing their LiPo battery. Two fights, two KO wins. However, it wouldn't be so easy going forward. Parasite. The one robot I wanted to avoid is our next fight. The biggest concern was that I had no idea if my robot could drive upside down, or even self right At the time, the strength of the chassis and design would be tested by Parasite's spinner. Again, the plan was to try and get in and out as quickly as possible with as little damage as possible. Are you ready to yeah. Yep. Are you ready to I guess. Uh, starting in three, two, one, go. Oh no. Three fights, three wins, and all in less than 35 seconds each. However, this one was a lot worse for Midnight Sun. Firstly, losing a fork in the first 10 seconds wasn't great. Then getting hung up on the second fork second, seconds later was certainly suboptimal. Despite all this, we discovered two things. Firstly, the robot can drive upside down. And secondly, it can self-right. Admittedly, with the help of the wall and the arena. 
Surprisingly, the next contact sent Parasite into a faceplant and shot it across the arena, jamming itself between the wooden wall and the polycarbonate of the arena. Not how I saw this fight going at all. After this fight, the chassis of Midnight Sun was beyond repair. Luckily for me, I prepared a backup chassis in case this exact thing happened. The retired chassis was given to Glenn as a trophy. Finally, for the last qualifying fight, we had Dark Blade. This robot had a very fragile but effective weapon. The chainsaw could easily reach and cut my drive belts and possibly through the very thin top plate. The aim was to avoid the chainsaw before pulling the chain clean off the runners, which had happened in its previous fights. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. That robot just refused to die. We broke a wheel, the polycarbonate wedge, and the chainsaw, as well as putting significant holes in the chassis. Somehow, we nearly lost this fight by once again getting stuck on my own forks. We also broke another fork while trying to get unstuck again. Once again, the weapon power on Midnight Sun was on full display, throwing Darkblade all around the arena, and ending with an fortunate bounce in front of the pit, leading to the easy pitting. After the qualifiers I was quite happy with my performance, knowing no matter what happens in the finals, I will have my first ever winning record at an event. As well as this, I had broken my streak of not winning on the second day of a two day event. To my shock, Midnight Sun was announced as being seeded number one, meaning we would have to fight seed number eight, uppercut in the quarterfinals. Uppercut is a big vertical spinner but has struggled with drive reliability and the weapon disc flying off under large impacts. I wanted to preserve the robot as much as possible so the plan was to turn the weapon up to full speed and hit them as hard as possible to get the fight over and done with as quickly as possible. I'm moving back. Oh, 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 oh,
Well, that was weird. This problem wasn't solved for another 14 months. Turns out the weapon motor was drawing so much current that the voltage from the battery had dropped just enough to cause a total brownout of the entire electrical system. This problem was resolved by limiting the weapon throttle to 80% and could be easily reset by just turning the robot off and on again. So sometimes that solution does work. After going 4 and 1 in its first event, I was happy with the bot's performance, but couldn't shake the disappointment of losing without knowing why at the time. The next WRC event, the bot made it all the way to the finals, but lost famously to Split from Broken Link Robotics. We got huh? Life are still lost. Yeah, oh, yeah, no, it's a battery for safety reasons. Yeah, let's yeah. 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 stop the batteries. Alright, yeah. yeah. so, so, we've got a couple yeah. of things like um, Go! The one. The one that's going to hit. Less than a month later, we flew back to Adelaide for Robot Havoc 6, where Midnight Sun had the potential to do well. In the next video, we will be having an in-depth look at this event, as well as the rest of the events leading up to modern day.